So today we are going to talk about the NFL Combine and in particular what it means for Rodney Anderson and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, we're going to talk about the NFL Combine and the eight players Oklahoma is having invited, if not all, will participate. And one in particular. But first, I want to tell you, I lost a bet, which means that I was singing and posted it to Twitter, and now I gotta post it to a video because I lost a bet and I keep my word, and if you wanna hear me sing, get to the end of this video and I'll put that in there. But now, let's talk about the eight players that Oklahoma has had invited to the 2019 NFL Combine. You know about Kyler Murray, and whether or not that dude shows up and what he would do if he shows up is still open to discussion. I've made videos about this in the past. You can check those out. I'll probably make videos about it in the future. The others are, of course, Punter, kicker, Austin Seibert. It's going to be really interesting to see what he does in the NFL. I doubt he'll do both. I hope he sticks to punting because that is a longer career in the NFL. And kickers, ugh, it's real hard to be a kicker in the NFL and not get cut. Now, you talk about Marquise Hollywood Brown and what kind of 40 time he might throw down. We're thinking sub 4-3, we hope, could be the fastest dude at the combine. So that's really, really exciting. And you're also talking about four offensive lineman Bill Biedenboe my goodness is this dude ever just paying dividends you got Cody Ford you got Drew Samia you got Ben Powers and you got Bobby Evans all invited to the NFL Combine that means four of his five starters last year are presumed to be first second third fourth round picks in the NFL draft Bill Biedenboe continues to earn his keep and of course the guy that is most interesting for me and I think most interesting for Sooner fans as we get ready for the NFL Combine, which will begin later this month, is running back Rodney Anderson. This dude has been hurt over and over again and seems to continue to come back bigger, faster, stronger. Had a breakout year in 2017 and went for over 200 yards rushing against a Georgia defense that at the time not only featured Roquan Smith, but was being talked about as one of the best defenses in college football in 2017 and 2018. And oh, by the way, the Paycom Jim Thorpe Award winner was also playing on that defense at corner. that be DeAndre Baker. So that Georgia defense was stout like you read about. And Rodney Anderson shredded him. You could also credit Rodney Anderson with winning the Kansas State game in 2017. And heading into the 2018 season, you would have been fine with saying Rodney Anderson is the best weapon you have at your disposal if you're Lincoln Riley because nobody knew that Kyler Murray would turn out to be the guy that wins the Heisman Trophy and passes for over 4,300 yards and rushes for over 1,000 yards. And you know what? If Rodney Anderson doesn't blow out his ACL, you might not get that version of Kyler Murray. He might not be asked to carry as much of the offense as he carried, all because Rodney Anderson was set to be the bell cow back and by all of the footage that we have and what we saw from jump in the FAU game, the dude was going to be a Heisman candidate. Just the way that he was able to run with the rock. You see him. He's built like a Greek god. I made a video comparing him to a Greek god at one point. I just genuinely believe that the dude was an outstanding running back. But heading into this combine, he's already going to have to answer repeated questions about his injury history. And he's going to have to overcome that. And that almost guarantees he's not going in the first round, maybe in the second round, and third round probably at best. But if he shows out at the combine, if he looks like one of the best running backs at the combine, he bust out 4-4. It's going to be really difficult for folks to continue to pass on him. But also, he plays a position that is proving to be worth the least amount of any position in the NFL, it almost feels like you could throw anybody back there now, especially with what we saw in the 2018 season when you thought Le'Veon Bell sitting out for the Steelers was going to have a big impact on that team. Turns out, no, we just plug and play James Conner. And perhaps you're thinking, maybe James Conner doesn't get his due as a great running back. Okay, tell it to Todd Gurley, who basically was benched during the playoff run for the LA Rams for fat CJ Anderson, who might be fresh but also looked like he'd been in a bucket of hot wings, okay? And if you could throw that dude back there and get production based on your scheme, based on your offensive line, and based on your quarterback's ability to hit on play-action passes, how valuable is Todd Gurley? 
And this is a guy who was being talked about the first half of the season as the MVP before Pat Mahomes went supersonic, just went super saiyan four on all of us, okay? If not for that, Todd Gurley gets handed the trophy, but now we're wondering aloud whether or not we need a Todd Gurley. Do we need a dominant running back to be good? Do we need a Zeke Elliott for the Dallas Cowboys to be good? Now, the Dallas Cowboys are built around Zeke Elliott, which is terrifying to me as a Dallas Cowboys fan because if something ever happened to Zeke, we don't have anybody you could throw back there, and yet I'd be proving my own point of going, okay, well, I guess Tavon Austin, you're back there playing running back, and I would not be surprised to see that dude go for 19 carries for 125 because, number one, I remember what he did to my Sooners in 2012. Just, it was Dana Holgerson who took a wide receiver, stuck it back there, and torched him. 17 yards of carry. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. Oklahoma won that game, but it's still a nightmare. I mean, if not for Landry Jones and Kenny Stills, it's a real nightmare. And we get to talk about it as if it wasn't a thing that really happened, but it really did happen because between Tavon Austin and Darren Sproles, two running backs that torched Oklahoma like they've never been torched in my lifetime, yeah, it's it's scarring. It's scarring for us. But I get I digress and just point to the fact that Rodney Anderson is going to have a really hard time getting drafted, number one. And he's going to have a really hard time making a team unless he can continue to show what he's been showing his entire time at Oklahoma, which is I'm bigger, I'm faster, I'm stronger. And you know what? I'm kind of Adrian Peterson light when we're talking about coming back from injury. I come back, I come back in a big way, and I'm proven to be an outstanding tailback, an outstanding running back that can not only help an NFL team, but given the right circumstances, could be a starter and next year's Philip Lindsay. But it all depends on what he's able to do at the combine. Nobody for Oklahoma needs a better combine than Rodney Anderson. So if he could put up 25 reps of 225 on bench, as much as folks don't really want to say that bench pressing has a lot to do with football, fine, whatever. If he can drop 4-4 in the 40-yard dash, if he can put down a pretty good cone drill and a pretty good shuttle drill, and he can show he still has hands to catch with, and he can show that his broad jump is 10 foot 5 plus, near 11 feet, then we're talking about a guy who is really going to have to be taken seriously as an asset. And that's what you're hoping for if you're Rodney Anderson. All right, that's it for me. Deuces. Oh, yeah. This. Well, it's turn and face the stars and stripes. It's fighting back them butterflies. It's call it in the air, all right. Yes, sir, we want the ball. And it's knocking heads and talking trash. It's slinging mud and dirt and grass. It's I got your number, I got your back. When your back's against the wall, you mess with one man, you got a song.